Hi all, welcome to my channel Tech with Sass. Whenever we interact over internet, maybe we are using the browsers or applications via our mobile, it becomes really important that data which we are sharing remains safe and not hacked by any hacker or any third party malicious agent. Because it may reveal our sensitive information like the banking information or our personal data. So what are the various options we have to encrypt data whenever we are trying to interact with the websites or mobile applications? So normally there are two protocols which are used like SSL and TLS. SSL means secured socket layer and TLS means transport layer security. SSL is not deprecated, so mostly we are using the TLS nowadays, like TLS 1.2 or 1.1 version. And it has basically two flavors, like one-way TLS and mutual TLS or MTLS. So let us see, like, what are the infrastructure required uh, to enable the TLS communication uh, so that we, we encrypt data whenever we are interacting with websites or other applications uh, over mobile. So, what is TLS uh, or SSL protocol? Basically, these are the protocols which provide the security and privacy of our data. Whenever we are sending any data over internet, they are used to encrypt information. Whenever we encrypt information, then anybody, even if they can snoop in into our conversation, they cannot make it out what we are sending and what data is there which is being transported to the sites or mobile application. So uh, these protocols are very important in terms of securing our data and providing the encryption. Now let us see whenever we want to extend data between a client and server, how can we do that? So when I say client, uh, in real world example, like uh, we can say as a client, as a browser or, or maybe uh, when we have some complex applications, maybe like we have the uh, application servers like VAS or Tomcat or JBoss or DB servers, right? So whatever the protocol we are using like a TLS, it is applicable for both by right? browsers or maybe the app servers or clients uh, and those uh, servers in the backend as well. So uh, suppose one client want to interact with the server, and then uh, what happens that uh, this uh, server needs to get a certificate from third party vendors like uh, the C authorities like the RDG cert or interest and some others as well. So first step is that uh, this server will get a certificate uh, from the C authority. Then whenever a client want to interact with this server, this certificate is sent to the client. So client will get the certificate and read it and verifies it with the CA authority. So once the client is uh, satisfied, okay, the server which it is pretending is the same server uh, by using the certificate, then it basically start the handshake with that server. So now when uh, the identity of this server is established, then both client and server can handshake and they can exchange the information. So whatever steps we have seen till now, they are very simplified form of what actually happens in the background. So now let us uh, deep dive into uh, the one-way TLS and MTLS, like uh, what actually happens in the background. So let's start with the one-way TLS. So here we have one client and one server. And when I say server, uh, you can assume that it might be any web server or like app server like uh, WebSphere app server or like the Tomcat or JBoss. And uh, we need to obtain the certificate beforehand uh, from the CA authority and install already in the servers before we do the interaction with the client. So when a client want to interact with the server, First step is to establish a connection. So it requests a secure connection uh, from the from the server actually. Then a server will respond uh, with its certificate along with public key. So 
whatever certificate it has already obtained uh, from the CA authorities, it is going to present to client so that it can verify, okay, whatever the server uh, I'm trying to connect to is the same server or some different server, somebody hacked in between. So it sends its uh, server certificate along with the public key to the client. Now the client will basically uh, decrypt the certificate and verify it. So when I say verify the certificate from a server, it means that it will check, okay, this certificate is not expired, it is not revoked, and the domain name, which I want to connect this same domain. So it's not changed or altered by somebody in between. Then uh, when a client is satisfied, okay, the certificate is correct, whatever information uh, it is saying, it is fine. Then the next step is that the client generates a security key or you can say session key or pre-master key as a number and it is the public key of the server and send to the server. So what happens that now when client is satisfied with the information in a certificate, it generates a number randomly and which we also call as a session token or session or pre-master key. Uh, and that is used for the encryption or decryption further in the process. Then uh, this uh, session key is encrypted with the public key of the server. Okay, then it is sent to the server. So now when the server receives this uh, encrypted uh, session key of the master key, it decrypts with private key because whatever the private key uh, server knows, uh, it will use uh, to decrypt that and once it decrypts the information which it got from the client then it will obtain the actual uh, security key or pre-master key and using uh, this security uh, session key both client and server are going to interact in the further communication like now the handshake is completed both have the uh, symmetric information symmetric information so now whenever they want to exchange data between uh, them they will use uh, this session key in and decrypt. So that is how one way TRS is established. So after the, uh, the security keys exchange between the uh, client and server, uh, both can interact with each other in a secure manner. Okay. So now we have seen how one way TRS works. So now let's focus on the, uh, the working of the MTLS or mutual TLS, like how it works. So here also we want uh, to basically uh, communicate uh, between the client and server. So in this, what happens that, I mean, uh, both the client and server need to obtain the certificate from CA authority first. Because in one way SSL only server need to present a certificate. So it obtains uh, the certificate from CA, but here in M, uh, this MTLS or two-way SSL, uh, we need to basically ensure that both client and server has obtained the certificate uh, from the CA authority. So now, when client want to interact with a server, uh, it basically uh, sends uh, the like same way, it sends a secure request uh, for connection to the server. Now, once a uh, server receives this uh, connection request, it will send its uh, the certificate and the public key to the client. Now, uh, client is going uh, to validate the certificate uh, which it uh, received from uh, the server by decrypting it along with uh, basically it verifies that uh, whether the certificate it has obtained from the uh, server is not expired, not revoked, and also the domain name uh, which it want to connect is same as uh, by claim by the server. So once a client verifies all these things, it also sends its certificate uh, to server because it's a mutual TLS. So client is also required to send its own certificate along with public key to the server. So similar step uh, server follows as well. Uh, it decrypts the, uh, the certificate which it got from the client and then verifies that the client certificate is not uh, in, not revoked 
or not expired and the name information everything is same as claimed by the client so after this thing uh, is completed the next step is to basically a uh, client sends and the scheme of encryption whatever encryption scheme are uh, they want to basically use while the uh, communication to the server and then uh, basically uh, server uh, basically uh, it encrypts uh, it excuses the, the scheme which it want to apply for the uh, the encryption process then encrypt that uh, encryption scheme with the client's public key and send it to the client. So now a client will basically uh, decrypt that uh, uh, this uh, encryption scheme from using it by using its own private key, and then it generates a session number or session token, or we also call it the master key that acts as a uh, basically a tributary key between uh, the server and the client for further exchange of information. Then uh, the client will encrypt that uh, the session key uh, with the server's uh, public key and send it to the server. Now server will decrypt that uh, the session key and then now both server and client have this uh, session key uh, established with each, between them. So now they can use this key for the further communication. So this basically completes the SSL handshake, or you can say MTLS handshake. So this basically uh, one one thing you can understand from here. If you compare from uh, MTLS with one uh, one way TLS, that in one way TLS only server was supposed to send its certificate to the client, but in the MTLS both need to present the certificate to each other. So this is the major difference uh, between uh, these two schemes of the uh, encryption. So now let us understand the differences or the uh, comparison between uh, both uh, two-way SSL or like mutual, uh, I mean one-way SSL or the mutual SSL. So uh, in this like, if you, if you see the uh, performance side, the performance of both one-way TLS and uh, Two way TLS is almost same, but like uh, while handshake, uh, mutual TLS uh, has some extra steps, like some extra hops happening. So maybe uh, initial handshake might be a bit lengthier, like few more milliseconds as compared to the one way TLS. But after the handshake is established, uh, both have same performance. So there is no issue as such in the performance point of view. But and also uh, the second thing is the management of certificates. Like uh, we use one way uh, TLS mostly when we have this browser to web server client of uh, browser to web server type of setup because uh, like we have billions of browsers and users. Uh, so it is not feasible uh, to issue certificate to each person or browser. Okay. But uh, in case of like uh, we have the internal applications like machine to machine interaction where one server is interacting with other server maybe database or some app servers at that time if we want we can enable the mtls but uh, it becomes a bit tedious uh, like uh, to uh, basically the uh, manage the certificates but because over time over time uh, the certificate grows as we increase our infrastructure like suppose you have the hundreds of JVMs and machines, then it becomes cumbersome uh, to have the MTLS. But yeah, so ultimately the issue is that you have to manage more certificate and then it become difficult, right? Like I said. So yeah, so with this, uh, I think uh, I covered uh, the one way and two way SSL, which I want to come uh, cover. So uh, thank you very much uh, for watching and see you next time. Uh, please leave uh, the comments uh, or questions you can ask. I will try to answer uh, with best of my capability. And thanks all. Uh, please subscribe. Thank you.